guys, it's Shadow the Rat, and for today's video, I want to talk about something that I've honestly been putting off, and that is how our intro is going with my rats. So, to give you a little bit of background here, I initially was trying to introduce 11 rats together. Uh, I had a group of eight, which was composed of four pairs of sisters, all introduced at different times, and then I had adopted a new group of three senior rats, which included two dwarf sisters and one older senior rat, uh, who was a standard rat. And I initially tried to introduce them for, I want to say maybe a month, but unfortunately things were not going well, particularly because the standard rats in my larger group, uh, which included six of them because two of them are dwarfs, uh, were all being very rude. And only the dwarf rats were being nice enough to the new rats to not freak them out. So things were not going super well. And I know saying that they were being rude doesn't sound that bad, but I mean like there was actual aggression going on, biting and blood and all those terrible things you never want to see during an intro. So things clearly weren't going too well. And so when one of my girls in the group of three, uh, which was the older standard girl, Potato, when she ended up getting sick and then needing surgery and then unfortunately passing a few weeks later, well, during that time period, I didn't do any intros because, well, obvious reasons. So after Potato passed away, I wanted to start intros again because I don't like having groups of two uh, because, well, if one passes away, then you're stuck with just one rat. Plus, I like the dynamic of a group of three and more. Anyways, I wanted to restart intros and get everyone finally together, but I had a problem, and that was that one of my older senior girls, Donut, uh, she has a lot of health issues. So she's two and a half years old and she has a pituitary gland tumor, she has two mammary tumors, and she has hind leg degeneration. So she is just kind of a bit of a hot mess when it comes to medical issues. And her symptoms are controlled very well with medication, but still, you know, she has all these issues going on. So she's a little bit more fragile than the other rats. She's also quite old at two and a half. And unfortunately, the worst thing is that she is the most aggressive and territorial rat I have towards strange rats. Like literally her first instinct when she smells or sees a strange rat is to rush them and try and bite them. It's kind of scary seeing her with a strange rat. Like she just wants to murder them. And I'm not kidding here. I wish I could say I was because she would straight up murder another rat. Like that's just how bad she is with new rats. Case in point, it literally took me five months to introduce her cage mates to her because she just wanted to bite them. Like it took forever. I mean, I had to keep my hand between them at all times for hours a day for weeks on end before she would stop trying to rush and bite them. So we're dealing with a really high level of aggression towards strange rats, despite the fact that she's completely fine with her cage mates and also completely fine with humans. So anyways, Dona is one of my problem rats and so is her sister Olive. Both girls are extremely aggressive towards strange rats. Uh, and it's just very difficult to introduce them. So that was the big issue I was running into because I didn't think Donut and Olive could ever be bonded to Tater Tot and French Fry, which were the dwarf rats, uh, the older dwarf rats that is. But at the same time, I couldn't just take Olive and Donut's cage mates and bond them to French Fry and Tater Tot because that wouldn't be fair on Olive and Donut because they've lived with them for so long. And also they went through an extremely terrible intro to actually bond with them. So I don't want to separate the groups now because that's just awful. It kind of would negate the whole point of that terrible intro. You know, I wanted to keep them together as a group, but I also wanted to bond in the new rats, which kind of gave me this whole dilemma. Well, before I could get started with intros, unfortunately, another of my rats passed away. And uh, this was one of my rats in the larger group, uh, which was my rat Egg. Now, Egg and Potato, which was the other rat who passed in the other group, were both around two years and three months of age. So they were senior rats uh, and their passing was unrelated. It was just due to different old age related issues. So it wasn't anything concerning as in something contagious. Um, I do have a lot of older rats right now, so unfortunately I do know that they're going to likely pass in the next few months or, you know, so forth, which is never fun to think about, but realistically I do know that's going to happen at some point sooner than later. But anyways, like I said, Egg ended up passing away, and then at that point I decided that I really couldn't keep holding up on intros, and so I had to figure out a solution to kind of this dilemma of Olive and Donut needing their cage mates, but their cage mates being the only ones who can be reasonably introduced to the older dwarf rats. So the solution I came up with was that I was going to introduce their five younger cage mates, uh, which are my two dwarf girls, Butter and Toast, and then the three standard rats, Omelette, Blueberry, and Banana, uh, to Tater Tot and French Fry. I know I'm saying a bunch of food names, I promise these are just all the rats' names. 
But anyways, that was how I was going to do intros. I was going to introduce those rats together, but not actually have them live together. So basically they would have cage time together for a few hours a day. I would do some free range with them together, but the rest of the day, the five rats would be with Olive and Donut in their cage and French Fry and Tater Tot, of course, would be separate in their own cage. And then I would also do a free range with those five rats and Olive and Donut to make sure that everyone's getting their free range together, everyone's getting their cage time together. So a bit of a mess, but basically my idea here was that if I could bond my five younger rats, then when Olive and Donut end up passing away, I wouldn't have to do more intros because the other rats would already be bonded and so I could just open up the cage right away. So that was kind of my idea here, especially because Olive and Donut are both around two and a half years of age, which means that they are at the end of a rat's lifespan. So unfortunately, they likely are living their golden months right now. And that's part of the reason why I don't want to stress them extra. But that's also another reason this method would work, because I probably won't be doing this sort of crazy schedule for too long, uh, just based on Olive and Donut's age. And obviously I want them to live as long as possible, as long as they have a quality life. But this was just me kind of preparing and trying to be realistic about their ages and the situation. And this just kind of seemed like the best solution to this problem at the moment. Well, I was doing intros with the five rats and Tater Tot and French Fry, and I saw Olive out. And so I decided, well, let's go ahead and see if Olive can be introduced to the other rats. So I put Olive in the cage and she initially was quite territorial and aggressive. So I had to block her with my hand for about 20 minutes. But after that, she calmed down and she was really good with tater tot and french fry. And so that kind of gave me hope because Olive was clearly showing signs of being able to adapt to tater tot and french fry as her cage mates. And I know 20 minutes sounds like a long time to calm down, but honestly, it took hours before the prior intro for her to settle anywhere near them without trying to attack. So this is a huge improvement. So seeing Olive do so well kind of boosted my confidence and made me want to try with Donut. Unfortunately, that did not go as well. Uh, Donut was extremely riled up right away as soon as she saw them. She immediately was trying to attack them, and when I tried to keep her from attacking them, she accidentally bit me, which is something she has never done before. And she actually tried to pull her bite, which I know because I only got a very small scratch on my hand from her teeth, and I felt her jaws go entirely around my finger. So the fact that I just was left with a tiny scratch really tells me that she was pulling her punches because she recognized me at the last moment. But if it was one of the newer girls, she would have really harmed them, and in fact in the past she did give them some serious injuries. Unfortunately, at the beginning of intros, she got tater tot next to her eye and that ended up getting infected and she nearly lost her eye because of that. Uh, thankfully she did recover with steroids and antibiotics but it was just a terrible situation and she got french fry in the tail and just I'm not kidding when I say donut is just absolutely aggressive and I've tried all sorts of approved intros I've tried the neutral method I've tried the carrier method I've tried the glove method I've tried taking them outside in the carrier to like the ultimate neutral environment I tried taking them on a car ride I tried putting them in a bathtub with a little bit of water I tried smearing food on them all of these things ended up with Donut trying to bite the ever-living heck out of the other rats, or I should say the new rats, because she's completely fine with her cage mates. She does not try to bite them or anything like that. That would be a whole different level of concern. Um, but all that is to say, I've tried it all, and I know that Donut is just not going to work with these new rats. And maybe if Donut was younger, then I would persevere, because then it would be worth it. But considering Donut's age, and also considering all her health issues, it's just not fair of me to continue to put this stress on her, because she's clearly very stressed out by having these other rats in her space. Uh, she doesn't mind smelling them in like the free range area, she's not bothered by that. But if she can see them and touch them up close, that's just too much for her, and she immediately goes on the offensive and really wants to attack them. So it's not a good situation for her, it's not a good situation for them, and so I've just ultimately decided to not continue introductions with Donut. So that brings me to what I am doing, and what I've decided to do is introduce the six rats in my large group to the two older dwarf rats. So I'm going to be introducing eight of the rats to each other, but not Donut. So Donut is not being introduced to anyone, but she's going to continue to live with her six cage mates in the lower double critter nation I have, while the older two dwarfs, who are not bonded to everyone else, are going to continue living in the upper critter nation I have with modifications, and they're going to continue doing intros with the six rats in the larger group who can safely do intros with them. And I'm just going to keep bonding them for a few hours a day so that down the line when Donut unfortunately passes away, then I'll be able to open up the cage and everyone will be bonded together and not need any more intros. And obviously, again, I want Donut to live as long as possible. I absolutely love her. She's one of my heart rats, and I just really adore her, but it just isn't fair to put anyone through the stress of intros, especially considering her age. 
Uh, and so because of that, I think that this is the best solution. That is pretty much what I'm doing for intros right now. This video is very long, but the situation is also unfortunately very complex. Uh, as you can see here, I actually have all eight of the rats in this spare critter unit that I have. I'm using this one for intros right now because it's completely neutral and we've actually worked up to the point of having some hides in there, which is super awesome. So I'm just going to continue to build this up until they can live together in a full cage environment. And of course, like I said, I'm not going to actually have them living full time together until Donut is no longer with us. Um, but as long as Donut is around, she's still going to have all of her cage mates in there. Uh, it's just that they're going to be coming out occasionally for a few hours here and there to bond with the other two girls. Just so that when the time comes, it will be easier to transition to the entire cage being open and just everything being joined up and them being one bonded group. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I know you can't see much of the rats, um, but rest assured that they are all in there. Well, all of them except for Donut. So there's eight rats in the single critter nation right now. Uh, whereas Donut has her double critter nation all to herself. But I'm about to do playtime, so I'm going to take Donut's six cage mates out and Donut out as well and have them run around. And I'm going to put up Tater Tot and French Fry and then give them a separate free range with everyone but Donut afterwards. So, you know, it's going to be a bit of a crazy mess schedule wise for a while here, but I think it's going to pay off. And I just think that this is the best solution for us right now. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys have a good day and I hope to see you next time. Bye!